Welcome to the International Woodcarvers Association. I'm Guy Nelson. This is our project that we're making today. This is what it will look like when you get it all done and paint it up. Have a great day. All right, guys. Good afternoon. Welcome to the International Association of Woodcarvers. Today is Saturday, July the 23rd, uh, a little bit after 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, we welcome you to our uh, monthly meeting right now. Um, we uh, usually meet on a weekly basis and have gone to a monthly um, monthly meeting starting in June um, just to go through the summer because we know everybody's busy during the summer months. So we want to thank you for taking time out of your Saturday to come in and join us. And uh, we hope everybody's staying cool and enjoying their summer. Um, today on our meeting, we're going to have uh, Guy Nelson on. Uh, Guy's coming to us from Utah, and he's going to be talking to us a little bit about carving bolo ties. Uh, we provided the size of the uh, cutout uh, that he's going to be using. It's a one and a half inch by one and three quarter inch by three and a quarter inch block. And uh, we'll turn it over to Guy here in a few minutes. Uh, Guy just also, he also organizes the Rocky Mountain Woodcarvers Roundup in Utah every year in April. Uh, so he's going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, before we get started, um, one other thing that we're doing today, we're doing a healthy knife auction. Uh, healthy has been generous to donate knives to us. Uh, the proceeds that we receive from uh, these auctions uh, go towards allowing us to continue to have these meetings. Uh, today, we're going to be auctioning off an Overby two-inch blade, three and five-inch handle Helvey knife. I'll show it to you here. Uh, hopefully, you can see that. Uh, we're going to be doing the bid for this knife uh, in the chat. So if you're interested in bidding on that knife, place your bid in the chat. Uh, if you are the highest bidder at the end of the meeting, stick around, and uh, we'll get your uh, PayPal information uh, you can pay us through PayPal, and again, those proceeds will go towards furthering these meetings. Again, we have to pay for the Zoom subscription to be able to do these, uh, and all the proceeds that we collect on that will go towards that. I uh, want to let you know a little bit about some things that are coming up uh, through the Wood Carving Academy. Uh, if you're not familiar with woodcar woodcarvingacademy.com, make sure you go out and check that out. There's a lot of good uh, instruction out there available. Uh, you can subscribe to uh, that website for a uh, one month, three month, or one year subscription. Uh, some of the people that's on this meeting um, have classes out there that are available. I know Dave Stetson's on here. I think uh, um, maybe Bob Hershey's on here. I'm not sure who else is available, but uh, there's a lot of good classes out there that you can take. Uh, they also list the workshops that are coming up, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the workshops that are available you can go out on their website and check those out. But uh, on August the 12th, Janet Cordell is going to have a class on carving the full-figured female. On October the 1st, Dave Stetson is going to start a new class uh, called the Seated Reader. Uh, again, that's October the 1st. On October the 8th, Kevin Applegate is going to have a class starting uh, that's going to be the Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, on November the 5th, Dave Stetson is going to have another class on carving Santa. And on December the 3rd, Bob Hershey is going to have a class on carving a raccoon Santa. Again, all that information is out on Wood Carving Academy's workshop website. Uh, you'll need to reach out to these carvers, these instructors, and sign up with them. So if you're interested in any of those classes, reach out to them. Uh, they'll give you the information as far as what you need to do to sign up uh, and take part in those classes. Again, it's great instruction on Zoom. You don't have to leave your house. Uh, you don't have to worry about trying to get uh, hotel rooms and do, doing travel and all that kind of stuff. It's really beneficial, so make sure you take advantage of those. Um, at the end of the meeting, I'll talk a little bit about the meetings that we have coming up uh, through the uh, International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, but now I'm excited to get to uh, Guy Nelson. Again, Guy's coming to us from Utah. He's going to be talking to us about carving bolo ties and talking to us a little bit about Rocky Mountain Woodcarvers Roundup. So, Guy, I appreciate you joining us today. Thanks for signing in. And uh, we look forward to hearing what you have to share with us today. Hey, thanks, Blake. Appreciate the offer. Uh, hope you're not too disappointed when this is all done, but we're going to give it a good shot. If you're wondering where I'm coming from, I'm in the clinical educator room at Primaries Children's Medical Center in Salt Lake, uh, waiting to start a pacemaker case that my partner was supposed to cover for me. and his mother died and another one's waiting coming here. So if it starts, he'll come in and relieve me. Uh, 
with that, I'm going to share my screen and I'll start to show you what we're going to work on today, if that's all right. Good, Dave. Okay. All right. Advanced. Oh, it's right there. And share. All right. It's a good looking trash can. So that's what our goal is at the end of the day. A gentleman here with, uh, I'm not sure the best way to show it to you with the lighting. Another one here, one with the beard. Okay, now they don't look too good yet. You got to put a little color on them. And when we get them all colored up, I kind of like the handlebar mustaches. So you'll see a few of those come out and around. I have a group uh, coming up here in Michigan that's doing a wood badge course. And these are for the quartermasters. I guess this guy isn't much of a cook. All right, there's uh, the other one. So when most people carve, they carve on the triangle or on the, the square peak, whatever. You know, they, they're going to carve over here on that corner. It's so weird looking at your hand and it's backwards. I always start with a square block of wood, okay? Everything I do starts with a square block. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to round it and it's going to look like a mailbox or a loaf of bread. So I hope you tell me if I'm out of focus there, Dave, and kind of keep me on the straight and narrow. When we do this, uh, the biggest mistake I see carvers make, they think they're peeling a potato and they put their thumb up here and pull the knife up to their thumb. Every time you do that, I guarantee that you are gonna prove that you bleed red. Every class you teach, uh, young men, old guys, that is one of the fatal mistakes they make. So we're just gonna take a couple of quick cuts on this piece of wood. Now, I don't know how detailed you can see on the screen, but this is not basswood. So this is a piece of aspen. Uh, the reason I carve aspen is because I get it out of the canyon. And if you take and uh, go up after a storm, Aspen's root systems are pretty shallow and you can find some pretty nice trees that are blown over. And uh, it's actually pretty decent carving wood. Uh, it's better if you make your little blocks of wood and chop them with a knife because the knife will follow the wood grain. This one here, I cheated and used my bandsaw and cut it to the size that I wanted. And so now I'm going to fight the grain just a little bit on it. But we about got it to where we can start to carve now. So you can see, this is just kind of a quick rough out. You want to leave the top as wide and as big as you can because you want that to be puffy when you're done. So now we're going to go to a technical part. You got to decide how big you want your hat and how big you want your face. So I'm going to go about right there. You want to lay your knife flat. Your right hand is the driver. Your thumb is the where you get your strength and your pressure. You put your thumb on it, you press down, and you rock back and forth. Now, you try to get that as straight as you possibly can. Come around to the side. Do the same thing. We're going to come around to this side, rock it down. Now, what I've made is a little stop cut. I'm going to come right up into that stop cut and relieve that wood. Now, this one's going to be a shallower one because I don't want to cut off the tip of his ear. The Baker hat fits pretty snugly on your head, much like a baseball hat. So, uh, you don't, you, this will, we'll take that piece off a little bit later on. So, we're going to drop down, measure down, see how big you want that ear. Do you notice my tape measure? Okay, we're going to put the bottom of the ear in and we're going to just another stop cut. We're going to come up and relieve it. Now decide how big of the ears. If you want ears like I have, you want a little bigger piece of wood left there than that. But 
these are just going to be regular human ears and not Dumbo ears. So we're going to come across, then we're going to come down. Now I'm pulling with this thumb, okay? If you pull with your thumb, when your thumb's up, that's the end of the motion with the knife because your wood will, has the possibility of cracking. And when it cracks and you're pulling with this hand, that blade goes right into the palm of your hand. And then I don't know what it is, but it makes naughty words fly out of your mouth. So I'm gonna to go to the other side. I just did a quick glance, make sure the ears are close to the same size. It doesn't really matter if they're off a teeny bit because we can level them up here in just a little short time. So we wanna come in like the knot right there in the bottom of that. Okay, we're gonna come in with the ear again, make your stop cut, flip it around, put your tip of your knife right against that cut, go up to your hat, make that stop cut deep, come back and relieve that wood right there. Now I'm just gonna clean it up just a little bit, make sure that the ears are close to the same depth going in and I look at the, can't, the monitor and you can't really tell, everything's backwards. I'd make a horrible dentist. Okay, there we go. I'm not sure, there you go, that's a better picture down below. Okay, next cut we're gonna do, we're gonna relieve a little bit here on the top. Blake or Dave, if I get out of focus or need to move for the lighting, Hope you can unmute and kind of tell me. So now we're gonna put in the top of the eye, eyebrow. We're gonna come across another flat cut, good deep stop cut. We're gonna come down and this cut right here is the bottom of the nose. So you can have a short stubby nose, a big gnarly nose, whatever size you want. But that's a good size stop cut. We're gonna come down and relieve the wood again. So why I'm making this cut right here, the Rocky Mountain Roundup this year is going to be the last week in April, and it will be up at Midway. We have the Holiday Inn. We have rooms reserved there. It'll be 129 a night. Every room in that uh, hotel will have a Keurig for your coffee, your hot chocolate, and they'll furnish you with uh, a nice breakfast. Okay, what I did, if I can show you, there's a put a stop cut in here on the side and I leave it plenty size. Maybe I went a little too close to the middle, but I'm making out right now the eye socket. So you wanna make sure that stop cuts right there, right there. I'm gonna turn it around here and I'm gonna do the same thing. Try to make it as close to the same size as you can. Now there's times that you can go back through and even that up in just a minute but we want to get that nose kind of blocked in. Okay. You can see the nose coming out. Then we're gonna turn it up and come, we're gonna come on a 45. We're just gonna take that. That's gonna be the edges of our cheeks on there. I'm not sure how to, Okay, maybe that's a little better picture. So you can kind of see the triangle V cut coming up on that. Yeah, if you hold it down just a little bit in the trash can, it looks like it gets a little shadow on it. So it helps it. You want it higher like this? Nope, down where you had it, right there. That's good. Right there. Oh, perfect yep. then. Okay, thank you. All right, now on the nose, we have a little bit more eye on this side than that side, but we're going to fix that in just a few seconds. We're just going to take the tip of his nose off and you can make that any way you really want. I mean, it's pretty hard to find two noses that are exactly the same. So taper that down toward the forehead, then come up on the side from the, that point right here. If I pull that back up, remind me, just cut it off a little bit. We don't want uh, big bulky stuff because our nose is more rounded. Okay, now I told you that this would be the time in around that. Just take just the tip of that off just a little bit. We'll fix that in just a little bit. 
Okay, this side's still wider than that side. So I'm gonna put my knife right here. I'm gonna come up and then you come on that eyelid and that's a rounded cut. So can you see right there? Then we're gonna come up and we're gonna pop that out. Now you have your base for your eye. It's a different style of an eye because I learned to carve at scout camp. And if you're a smart carver, you always put a glove on. And, you know, I'm carving next to the OR, so I'm close to surgical backup. So you see blood squirt out, don't worry about it. I got friends in low places over there. All right. Hey, guys. Got a question in the chat. Can you tell us again where the uh, Roundup's located? Yeah, it's going to be in Midway, Utah. Uh, that is about 40 minutes from Provo. It's also 40 minutes from Salt Lake International Airport. It is uh, a mountain ski resort type of a town. Uh, it's just a very small nostalgic community. Uh, it's all Swiss oriented. The Swiss uh, settled that area. And so you'll see a lot of Swiss shape, Swiss buildings and the decor will all remind you of Switzerland. Uh, the actual, this year, we've been doing it at the Zermont Resort, which is a very nice resort, but they make us great big promises and we promise to do X amount of business and they hold us to our word, but then yet they don't give us our brooms that they promised. So this year it'll be right in downtown Midway at this, my ear just broke right here, but it's not a big deal. We're just gonna fix that right now. So then we're gonna take and just trim that up around that inside and come off. That will be right on Main Street in Midway at the city offices. Uh, it's a huge building. We can all be in one room. Uh, a lot of you that's been before, there's the, I think it was Goo Goo's Barbecue will be right across the street uh, in the Ridley's. Uh, there's the Corner Cafe, which is an awesome restaurant. Everybody that ate there said how great it was. Uh, the food, there's a bakery all right there within walking distance. And this year, because we're not in, a hotel, we can have those folks that want to have a cup of coffee all day, we can have that for them. I'm going to take a part of his ear off. We take several cuts right here, just so that we don't chip everything out. Uh, we have six CCA carvers coming to teach this year at the Rocky Mountain Roundup. We have Carol Levy that will be here. We have Del Green. Uh, Dwayne Gosnell is coming back to visit us again. Uh, Rich Weatherby will be here. Uh, who else? Oh, and Wayne Laramore. I don't know if you've ever taken a class from him, but he, well, I can't tell you that there's a bad instructor there. Now, the next question you're going to see on the screen is, well, there's six instructors. There's only five days. Well, Let's take uh, Scott Bill. He takes all of Dwayne Gosnell's classes online and he's pretty good friends with him. So he'd rather pass on his class. So when he sends in his registration, I'm gonna put in the top of his mustache now. It's gonna come out, round and down. He'll just put in there, I prefer not to take Dwayne. And so I'll put Scott on the table to the left of Dwayne, and the instructors rotate tables to the right. So whoever's on your left, they'll be your instructor the next day. So if I put Scott to the left of Dwayne, Dwayne will never make a back to him and he'll get the other five instructors. So when you send in your registration, you have your date on it and you put what instructor, if there's one that you'd rather not have, and if not, you can play it by chance, the first 10 that says, hey, I would prefer not to take it from Dwayne because I take one from him every month. Those will be on the table to the left. Okay, there's a quick little mustache in there. 
Now let's put in the side of his beard. We're gonna come right up here and this is just a big lazy C cut coming around. Now at our roundup, we try to have some pretty fun activities there at night. So that was just another relief cut. I'm gonna come in and put the bottom of his cheek in so you know where his face ends and comes across. There we go. You can keep reminding me when I pull that up. Let's do it to the other side. It's kind of like algebra. If you do it to one side, let's do it to the other side. So on Monday night, anybody that would like to play, uh, you'll get a piece of two inch wood and you have 10 minutes to carve it into a ball. Del Green has a pipe and he'll put it in that pipe and he won't smoke it, but he'll let it roll down that pipe and whose ever ball win, goes the furthest wins the competition. And it's just a kind of a fun little activity uh, until someone doesn't wear a glove and their ball is red and then they have to make fun of me for the rest of the week. But that, that's usually a fun, uh, little fun contest. The instructors come back and hang out each night. If you're having an issue with one part of your carving that you had from them that day, uh, go sit down with and visit with them. I've never seen one say, no, I'm done carving for the day. Uh, in fact, you'll have a hard time finding Dwayne Gosnell not carving somewhere with someone or something. Uh, the instructors have all been really good about coming back and helping. Uh, this year we have Chris Hammock coming. He'll do his design class here. The design class is 450. Uh, the five day class is 350. Uh, as Blake can tell you, when you start running a few of these carving things, you find out there's a little more expense, hidden expenses that you don't realize. Uh, we don't run the car, uh, roundup to make money. We run it so that we can have an opportunity to meet some of the CCA carvers and to learn from them and become a better carver. And if we organize and run it, I can ask Dell, hey, you know, I've, I've been a big fan of Dwayne's carvings for a long time. And so I called and asked Dwayne first and he told me it was too far to come, but when uh, Dell called and asked him, I don't know, dell has got a magic wand and Dwayne's been out twice. And when he leaves, he says, guy, anytime you want me to come back, I'll come and teach. And he's been really good support. In fact, all of our CCA members have been really good. So I've been carving here, just kind of laying out the eye. You round off this edge here a little bit. And when you make this cut, you got to go from the outside to the inside. If you go from the inside to the outside, because this wood is green, you're gonna see that it will chip and pull apart on you. So I can't really tell if you can see that top of that eyelid right there. Now I'm gonna come down here. And for, if you guys can draw, you'd be much further ahead to take your pencil and draw your eyes in. Uh, you know, like I said, I learned to carve at scout camp and they don't have a lot of that stuff hanging around. So you grab your knife and go, hmm, well, wish I hadn't taken that piece of wood off, but you go on and you do it different next time. So I'm going to put the little edge in there to give him, I don't know if you can see that. And then you're going to come across here and the top of the eyelid is going to come down. And then we're going to put in a little bit of a relief. Uh, just a little crow's foot right there. And on this eye right here, we're going to taper it down. It just kind of round it. And that's just kind of the beginning, the shape of it. Now we're going to take this right here and kind of round it off. You don't want any big sharp angles left. Uh, most of our faces are pretty good. They don't have sharp angles. They're all rounded and fluffy. And you can leave this a little bigger and make it a little bit more chunky. So now we're going to go to the other side, put it down low. We're going to come across. And now I'm going to take my knife in next to my nose and it goes deep. And then across the top of your eye, you come in and that's kind of a deep cut. And now we're going to take, 
this part right here is a lot deeper than what the top is because you want your eye to look a little bit rounded on there. And when you start going hanging around these CCA carvers, they'll tell you where to put a little cut in to create a shadow. And that's basically what all that is, is just to create a little bit of shadow coming through there. I'm going to put the top down. Okay, trying to remember to keep moving down to the trash can so that you can see. I'm pushing my knife toward my nose and it chipped out anyway. Uh, one of the reasons it's kind of fun to carve bolo ties, when you go to these carving classes, everybody is scared to carve the face and the eyes. Well, when you do these little bolo ties, that's all you're carving is the face. And so you get good at it. Well, I can't say you get good at it, but you get a lot of practice at it. Let's put it that way. Uh, hey, guy. Yes. Uh, you and I talked uh, a couple of nights ago about why you did name tags at the Roundup last, uh, this past April. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, one reason is because I have terrible handwriting. And even though my name is Guy, I write my name and they look at me and they say, hey, what is your name? And then we have these instructors and they have 10 new students every day trying to remember every uh, new student's name, it, it gets kind of challenging. Anyway, it does for me. And so I figured if I made everybody a name tag and they were all a different character, a different style of a hat or diff, you know, just a different head and put their name underneath it, they could, oh yeah, hey, that's Matt the pirate from Vegas or uh, there was Ross Cox there. Uh, he was a newer carver. And Ross was, uh, he had the hippie, I believe, going across it. But the, it just kind of helps the instructors memorize people and who they are. All right, right here, our mustache. Can you see how rough that is, how sharp? I'm just going to put our blade right here. And so that's kind of where that idea came from. That and uh, Pete LeClaire on his carving club people. He made everybody a name tag and it was kind of a cool little gesture. And whoop, I wonder if I turn this way if my light would be any better. Better or worse? Uh, and so that's where the idea came from. Uh, it definitely wasn't to show off any of my work. It was just more so that people would have a souvenir to go home with and that people be easier to remember one another's name. That, that was the purpose behind all of them. The challenging part was trying to find 80 different characters. There's only so many cowboys and people kind of type of hats that I could think of. Okay, how are we looking? Can you see him okay? Next part we're gonna do, we're gonna come up in the middle of his nose. We're gonna cut a V out. And, you know, everybody carves different. It's kind of fun to watch somebody else carve. You can see how they do it. If you like that cut, go ahead and incorporate it into your style. And throw it in the trash when you're done. I've resurrected it. And I'm going to cut that back. And that just kind of gives us a little bit of a forehead. And we can clean this bottom part out. We're going to take our dockyards and put in some hair. And that's going to take a lot of those rough lines out. We're going to come across right there. Now, on bolo ties, I come in through the back here. I make a good deep stop cut coming up to where his beard is underneath his chin. And just pull it across here. And this is where your paracord will come out. Uh, on Tuesday night, we'll go back to the roundup a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry for skipping all over, but when I have time, I'm going to repeat cuts. I'll tell you a little bit more about it. On Tuesday night and Wednesday night, we have uh, guest carvers come up. Uh, we've had Sarah Bearclaw from uh, St. George. She's written several books. She'll teach a class. Uh, she's also a really good painter. 
she's just a super nice gal. Uh, you can sit down and visit with her. She'll tell you her uh, painting technique, why she paints the way she does, how she comes up with her creativity. Grab her book, have her sign it. Uh, we have uh, Susan Hendricks that does the spirit sticks. And she'll be there. She'll teach you how to do an eye if you'd like. We have Mary Dane, who's also an excellent carver. Uh, she'll help you do whatever you would like on your projects. So right here, we're going to just take his beard because we want to make his mustache look bigger. We're going to come up and go that way. And then we're going to come back down. And we're going to lay that out. So, and then this mustache on this side will come out right to there. Come up and cut that stupid knot out in my freebie wood. That's a problem when you use free wood. Now you can also just come up from below the ear and round it up too, and kind of make it look like he has a jawbone. And if you don't have a full beard, you definitely want to put that cut in. So you can kind of see right there, he has a jaw. And I cut off the tip of his mustache, which I'd rather not do that, but it'll be all right. Uh, so that that's the classes that we'll have on Tuesday and Wednesday. On Thursday night, we have a smoked barbecue turkey dinner. Uh, I have a guy that he has a couple of huge smokers. He comes up on Wednesday night and he starts to smoke the turkeys. And by Wednesday, at six o'clock, they're about perfect. I'll give him the turkeys on uh, Sunday night. And the turkeys are about 25 pounds a piece, 20 to 25. He puts them in a bucket of brine and they soak in that in a refrigerator until uh, Wednesday when he starts to smoke them. And it's usually, well, it's always been really good. Uh, Okay, what I did, I just rounded off this hat just a little bit right there. And now I am going to come to the side and I'm gonna pull that hat down so it sits close to his head. So on Thursday night, we have a great barbecue. Uh, all of the instructors uh, will get together. I don't know if you've ever heard Chris Hammock perform, but he is quite a singer. Uh, Rich brings his mandolin and yeah, he's, it's just a fun night. Uh, this year, the night of the concert outside, we had a storm blow through and had a little bit of very late season, white stuff falling. So we went upstairs and the concert lasted a couple hours and yeah, it was just really fun. Uh, Ryan Olson, uh, if you know him at all, you know that he's an opera singer. Uh, he always performs. Uh, yeah, there, it's just fun. Del Green, he's uh, he plays the electric guitar. So far, he's been a little bit shy, but they might con him into it one year. So right now, I'm trying to taper it in so that he comes down, fits his head, and we have a poofy top on top. So that's the purpose of these cuts right now. Uh, the roundup on Friday, everybody's usually uh, getting excited and they'll pack up and take off. Uh, but we try to keep it to 10 people per table. Uh, I just have a rough time if I'm in a class and there's much, many more than 10. I, I need a lot of instruction from the teachers. And if there's more than 10 people there, it's pretty hard to get all the instruction that I want. If you keep it to 10 or 11, uh, it seems to turn out pretty well in my humble opinion. But, you know, we're always, okay. Now what we need to put in is this line right here on top. So we have a little brim on his hat. It seems to work out pretty well. Now on Chris Hammock's design class, Chris, uh, they anything you can think of that you want to carve, it, it doesn't make any difference what it is from a dragon to a rat to kids on a four-wheeler. You tell him what you want to carve. You sketch it out. 
he furnishes all of the wood and uh, you carve it for the week. And then when you go home, you have a one of a kind project that just looks incredible. Now his class is 450, which is one of the cheapest design classes you'll ever find. And there's only eight people that go into that class. Last year, uh, it was probably six weeks before uh, his class filled up. This year, there are two spots left in it, okay? Now, for, to uh, sign up for the Roundup, go to Rocky Mountain Carver's Roundup, click on the registration, print it off, fill it out, and send it in. Uh, I put them in, make sure you put the date on it because that, you know, the sooner you send it in, the more seniority you have on getting the instructors that you want. <clears throat> There's also uh, a bio of the instructors there. Uh, they usually bring, well, let's put it this way, Rich Weatherby, Del Green, they had two six foot tables full of rough outs that you can pick. Okay, you can see it's starting to come along. Uh, I'm gonna grab a little dockyard tool. When I put the hair on, I like to use two or three dockyards uh, to give it just a little bit more texture and a little bit more variety into the hair. So at the very first, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna put that snot trough in because that's what all professional healthcare people call that. And then we need a nair. So we're gonna come in, just take a little piece out right there and then we'll clean it up with our knife in just a minute. Okay, so now I, the way I do my hair, I like to do small cuts and random and they come in all different areas coming up. And that way you get different levels and it's not one straight cut. So it's not too much. Now, I've had a lot of questions come in to me asking me about aspen wood. Aspen, if it is green, it will cut just like a good thick piece of cheese. If it's hard, uh, extremely dry, it's pretty good carbon then, but it's that middle ground when it's not really dry and it's not wet that I don't really enjoy carving it. So I've been known to cheat and put it in a bucket of Dawn dish soap, just to squirt in a five gallon bucket, let it soak there for two or three days, put it in a plastic bag. And if you're like Matt that lives down in Vegas, just put your wood into the bag and seal it up in the Ziploc bag and stick it in the back window of your car. Now, if you leave it too long, it'll get soft and spongy. The other thing you kind of have to watch is when you take it out. You take it out and you set it down in that hot Vegas sun, I promise you, you're gonna have cracks galore in it. Take and wrap it in a cloth and put it down. In Utah, we all have basements, but you put it someplace where it's cool, where it can dry nice and slow, and you'll be just fine. So we got a little bit of hair on the top of the mustache. We're gonna go down. We're gonna put some in the bottom. I wish I could keep an eye so I could tell what you guys could see and what you couldn't. Uh, not a lot of feedback, so it's kind of hard to tell if you're getting uh, what I'm trying to demonstrate or not. Uh, the Rocky Mountain uh, Roundup, like I said, it will be limited. Uh, we have probably, the site's only been open, oh, what, a week? And like I said, Chris Hammock's class is almost full, and we probably have, I've got to find my knife wherever I said it. Oh, we have 10 people already signed up to come. Uh, the hotel room, uh, average, yep, then in this, you know, it is a touristy town. It's not far from Park City. So if you bring your wife, uh, you can take them over to the Olympic Park. Uh, they have the zip lines there. They have slides. Uh, there's quite a bit going on over there in uh, Park City area. 
right there in Midway. They have world-class golfing. Uh, the Pro Upper Provo River is there for the fly fishermen, hiking, biking. Uh, you can rent four wheelers just right there and go up through the mountains. If you've never been four wheeling and you wanna go see some mountain terrain, rent one, go up and see Cascade Springs. Just a beautiful area. Uh, if there's something that you'd like to see and you're wondering about it, go ahead, uh, give me a call, shoot me a text. I'm more than willing to help you find what your family would like to do while they're here. There are five national parks in Utah. Uh, April is one of the slower months for the parks, so it's a great time to hit them up while you sit and carve. Going to put in some eyebrows. Now, my eyebrows is a little bit different than Rich uh, Weatherby's. But hey, they work when you paint them. Now the thing you got to remember when you put an eyebrow in, that goes on this angle from the nose, and when you get to the side, you got to come up this way. So it has to kind of rotate your tool around. And so as we do that, it uh, directs the flow of the hair. Now this is a little bit smaller tool. Why I have it here, I'm going to go ahead and just put the lines in the hat. Uh, the other thing is, if you're thinking about uh, coming to the Rocky Mountain uh, Carver's Roundup, you're not quite sure if uh, it's for you or not, talk to some of the people that's been uh, the last year or two and ask them if it was worth coming. You know, I'm a little bit biased, so I don't, I figure I'm kind of like a used car salesman. I'll tell you what you want to hear, but ask someone about it and they'll tell you if it was worth coming or not. Uh, the thing is, when you come to these events, uh, this year I had an opportunity to get to know Scott Bill quite well, uh, Chucky Ducky. I mean, these are just fun people to hang and carve with. Uh, you sit at the table, laugh, giggle, and show each other your techniques. Uh, There's a guy from Texas that is really a good uh, bolo tie carver. Uh, John Fowler, Chris Guardia. These guys, are, I mean, they're all about helping one another carve, teach you new things. I'm gonna put a little more depth, a little more uh, hair into the mustache so it doesn't look like it's uh, just been glued on. So most of the time, every all these cuts, you don't really need to use dockyards either, okay? Uh, I've done hundreds of them with nothing more than a pocket knife. Uh, the way I got into it, there's a gentleman by the name of Chuck Loveless. He was Bill Birch's original carving partner. Uh, when his wife got sick, uh, he couldn't travel. And so that's when uh, Bill Birch picked up Gary Dollar. Uh, but he came to our scout troop one night and gave us uh, an hour and a half instruct on it. And when I started doing bolo ties, each one of these would take me two or three nights. And now you can kind of see they, they've gotten a little bit easier and a little more detailed. If you've ever seen one of uh, Gary Dollar's, Bill Birch's, but that's from taking classes. The other comment I always get from people, I'm not good enough to come to the roundup. Uh, every year for the past two years that we've been having the roundup, I've had two to three people that didn't even own a knife until the night before. And they went home with some very nice projects. Uh, the instructors will ask, you know, hey, what's your skill level? You tell them how long you've been carving. And they'll kind of tell you, hey, you know what? We can get this done and it will look awesome. And man, they're not kidding. They just do a great job. Now, if you're a true knife carver, you can come up here and take a little triangle out behind the nose, and then come up on top and do the same thing. And then just kind of round that nair down just a little bit. Uh, when I paint, I like to use Chris Hammock's turd polish, as he calls it. And he'll tell you the reason it's called a turd polish is because you can take a turd and put that polish on it and it will make it look great. And 
So he encouraged me to use that on my carvings. I'm not sure if it's because all my carvings look like turds or if he was trying to make them look better. But there is your finished project right there. I've chipped off a little bit of his mustache. So we'll take that right like that. And now we have a back. Just take my dockyard and put a hair into it. And here we go. And Guy, can we get a slow uh, view of the entire thing when you're done? Because you got a little glitter glitch on your side with the video. So if you just go really slow, let us see every angle. Okay. I want to do one more thing to it before we wrap it up. If we take uh, a dockyard and go into the ear on each side, pop it up. I apologize. I wish I could have got into this area a little bit before and we could have played with our cameras and worked with our lighting a little bit better. And I think it would have helped. I, I think it's your, it's your broadband and you just have to oh. hold it long time in one spot. Oh, okay. Uh, and I am uh, using the guest Wi-Fi at a hospital. So, you know, they don't want their employees watching movies while they're doing their surgery. Okay, just got to flip those out and then we can. Hey, guy, talk a little bit about uh, what you do as far as the hole and running the, uh, the string through it and all that kind of stuff. So I have a drill press. I used to hold it in my hand and drill through like this, but I was holding it like this and drill through. And when it goes through, it goes into your hand. I don't know what it is, but the drill bit in your hand really stings bad. And so I bought a drill press and I set it. It's a quarter inch drill bit that I use to drill through. I come in probably an eighth of an inch and it drill straight down through. And that will come out through the bottom. I use paracord, a quarter inch, and then they call them paddles and I carve a little end and the glue onto the end of them. Hey, Chucky Ducky, I can see you there on my screen. You look pretty styling there, buddy. I can't, oh, there I am up on the top corner. Sorry, it's just that I could see Chuck, can't see many. So that's the way that I run I, through. Yeah. And then if you want to make it into uh, a name tag, Joe. Uh, on the back here, I'll hollow out a little spot and glue in the metal piece. And then there's the three magnets and the magnets are supposed to hold up to seven pounds. All right, any questions for Guy at this time? Hey, this is Scott Peel. I, uh, hey, Guy, did you talk about the uh, how you get to know everybody's names at the Rocky Mountain? Uh, a little bit we did. Uh, we talked about the name badges. Yeah. And how we could memorize them that way. Uh, oh. That that was the purpose behind it because I, can, you know, in my job, you don't want to remember people's names because it gets you in trouble. And so then I look at someone, you tell me your name three times, but if I can remember uh, what character you are on your name badge, it, made, it makes it much easier for me to remember your name. So a lot of times I could look and see what character you were and I could remember who had that. So that's why. That was the purpose behind the name badges. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I love the one that you made. Uh, I don't know if you told everybody that you made them all yourself and uh, I know my kids run around with it and play with it. So again, that was, that was pretty cool. Uh, I don't we even were... remember which one you got, Scott. Uh, you made me an old soldier, man. Oh, that's right. You got the old Confederate dude looking, huh? Yeah, you know, North Carolina. Represent. Yeah. So uh, that's the thing that's kind of fun about these bolo ties. If you can think of a hat, I mean, somebody had a skinhead there uh, with the mohawk, red hair on it. I was just running out of ideas. When you try to figure out 80 different people there, I had a guy there that had the same haircut as Chucky. Uh, the beard wasn't quite as long, but there, you know, hopefully nobody took offense to what they had. 
somebody got Frankenstein and a skeleton. So uh, there was a one with a scout with a bear underneath it, a smoky bear hat. So you name it, and you can carve them. All right, guy. Um, I just want to say thank you for coming on. I know it's uh, it's probably been a stretch for you a little bit to come in, knowing that you've got a procedure to do here shortly. So I appreciate you taking time out of your day to be able to do that. Um, I wanted to remind you all about the uh, Rocky Mountain Woodcarvers Roundup. If you're interested in that, reach out to Guy or go out on their website and get signed up for it. Uh, again, that's uh, coming up in April. I think it's April 20. And correct me if I'm wrong, guy, April the 24th through the 28th of 2023. Um, right. So make sure if you're interested in signing up for that, get on there soon, because I think once it's full, it's full. And I don't think uh, you'll be available to uh, to sign up at that point. Um, and if you want to go ahead and stop your screen share, guy. Okay. Well, you don't want to see my trash? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there he is. Uh, any other questions for Guy before we go today? Okay. Um, see you at the Rocky Mountain Roundup, guys. Come visit us out in Utah. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to let you all know just a few more minutes on the uh, the auction. So if you're interested in uh, in bidding on this knife, again, healthy knife. It's a John Overby uh, handle, two inch blade. John's on the meeting with us today. Uh, it comes with a uh, healthy sheath. I don't think Rich and Holly are making many more of those. So uh, if you're interested in that, go ahead and put your bid out in the chat. Uh, some of the things that are coming up with us um, in August, we're going to have a meeting on August the 20th. Uh, Malcolm Sharp uh, from Twisted Sticks is going to be on with us. He's going to be talking a little bit about his walking sticks, and you can see him on Instagram. Uh, in September, we're going to go back to our weekly meetings. Um, so Daniel Clay will be on uh, September the 3rd, and Daniel has a new book out. I don't know if y'all remember Daniel, but um, he was on with us in the past, and he does chip carving out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about his new book, and uh, I'll be showing that in coming meetings. I've got a copy of it, uh, but uh, join us in September for Daniel Clay. On September the 10th, we've got Jack Loring, who is co Cousin Jack on uh, YouTube. Uh, he's going to be coming in on the 10th. I want to remind you all about Carving the Rockies. Um, I'll be going out to uh, Colorado Springs in September uh, to broadcast live from that meeting on September 24th and 25th. Um, so make sure if you can't make it to the meeting that you join us live on this meeting, uh, but try to make it out there. And if you do come by and say hello, uh, it should be a great show. It's the first annual CCA meeting uh, of Carving the Rockies. And uh, hopefully they'll be doing this every year. So we'll uh, we'll look forward to that. Um, in October, we've got Nikki Reese that's going to be coming on. Bob Hershey's committed. He's going to come on and do a presentation. Again, we've got other uh, workshops and stuff coming up. So try to get involved in uh, some of these uh, carving groups that's, uh, that's available and uh, some of the classes that's coming up. Uh, you'll be glad that you did. Again, God, thank you for coming on with us today. Thanks, everybody, for coming in and joining us. Today, this is the International Association of Wood Carvers, uh, where carvers are helping carvers. And join in the next time, which will be August the 20th, for our next meeting uh, with Michael, uh, with Malcolm Sharp. Thank you all for joining us today.